evening we're coming to you from Elmira, New York, and uh, we are really very, very honored and privileged to be able to be in the living room and the, uh, the seminar room of one of the very most significant uh, individuals on planet Earth that have had experiences with an altered state of consciousness, uh, Ms. Jane Roberts, who along with her husband, Robert Butts, have been investigating uh, over these past 10 odd years, if I'm correct, I'm not exactly sure, but approximately 10 okay. years, another state of consciousness that than that than which we are normally accustomed to uh, dealing with. I'd like to welcome you very, very much to the program, and I thank you very much for inviting me here to be able to talk to you. I wonder, perhaps, uh, whoever, I'm not sure uh, which one of you might like to pick up on it first, but uh, there will be some people in the audience, believe it or not, although it's a pretty aware audience that watches this program, but there will be some people in the audience who aren't aware with the, of the material, the set material. Could you maybe just give us a little bit of a background for the general audience of the means by which, in a general way, you came in contact? kind of consciousness and how it, got, how, how it all got started. Bob? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this began uh, late in 1963. Uh, one evening, Jane was uh, writing poetry after supper, as is her, her, her usual custom, and uh, she went into an altered state of consciousness. Mm -hmm. That was very unexpected by her. And uh, she uh, had an out-of-body experience. She found her consciousness leaving her body. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the same time, she began to write in sort of an automatic script. Now, this experience lasted for over a half an hour. And when Jane returned to her usual state of consciousness, she uh, discovered that she produced this uh, script called The Universe is uh, Idea Construction. This is in one evening? In one yeah. evening, after supper. Mm -hmm. I was painting in my studio, and uh, she was sitting out here. And I thought it was awfully quiet out there. Mm -hmm. and so I finally came out to see what uh, she was so quiet about. Yes. And it was just at the end of this experience. Uh, yeah. She wasn't even able to uh, use her voice to call me to tell me what was going on. Good heavens. Had anything like that happened to you before? No, and actually Somewhere? it lasted uh -huh. a lot longer. It uh -huh. was uh, over, well over an hour. Oh. Yeah. Well. No, I, I just, just um, oh, you know, I, I've been a poet since I was a child. And uh -huh. I, right? Mm -hmm. The next thing I knew, um, my consciousness was just gone. And I, it wasn't an out-of-body in the respect that I had another body or mm -hmm. thought I did. My consciousness went through like the window and then into the leaves and into everything. And it wasn't until I came back that I found the script and realized that you know, my, I had to have written it. Yeah. When you came back and you were in, you you weren't you weren't. It, there was two separate planes. You weren't aware of the other as you were. I wasn't aware of my body at all, you or the manuscript, or writing, or anything. I was completely. What did you think? Gone. When I was doing it, or after? Oh, after. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we get to what you were thinking. Uh, as is. Uh, the you? first thing I did was call for Ron. Uh, and, and I saw the script and I started reading it like mad. But the thing of it was that um, the stuff that was in the script was stuff I had felt while I was out, to some extent, in that um, the script, again, the title was The Physical Universe as Idea Construction, the idea being that uh, everything is a result of idea and has consciousness. But when I was out, yeah. I would go in yeah. atoms and molecules, uh -huh. and I felt their consciousness. Yeah. But then when I read the script, mm -hmm. it was terribly hard to accept portions of it uh, because it pretty much went against what I've been taught. But I mean, just just having experienced that, I mean, what was your reaction to Wild? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I literally, I had done no reading yeah. in this field. Yeah, I had right. done nothing. So as far yeah. as I knew, this had never happened before yeah. to another it wasn't individual. Super it was something more than super It form. was, yeah. you know, where did I go? How yeah. did I get out of my body? Uh, this right. is fantastic. Then I would presume that on the on the on the on the, on the trail of that, you probably uh, began to uh, let's say, did you begin to investigate this field? Yeah, then right. Did your case see who had experiences similar, or 
Did you begin to investigate? The well, then? I was a writer. Okay. And mm -hmm. so um, I was. I had just finished uh, my first uh, science fiction novel, which was a paperback yeah. uh, called Red Dollars, and I was looking for something else to write. Mm -hmm. And Robbie <laughs> came up with the idea, joking. He said, "Why don't you do a book?" This must have something to do with ESP or something. Right. So why don't you get some books, read up on it, um, try some experiments, mm -hmm. and if they don't work, you can always say that, well, I tried all this stuff, mm -hmm. and it just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And if it works well, you know, who yeah. knows? Yeah. So we started out, um, we got two or three paperbacks. We found out about Ouija boards yeah. and everything. And we borrowed a Ouija board. We didn't even buy one. <laughs> and uh, after I forget once or twice or something, we started to get stuff on the board. And with the um, psychological knowledge I had then, the first thing I thought of was, well, it's the subconscious. Uh, Rob was pushing it, or Rob would say yeah. I was pushing it. So we went through that long yes. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And after only um, <clears throat> maybe five or six, seven sessions with that, uh, Seth came through vocally. I would yeah. start to know what was going to be said, and then I would start to want to speak. Okay, I'm wondering if maybe we could for the audience now. When you say Seth came through, maybe <laughs> right. we could, uh, you know, make the Seth then. Okay, maybe uh, the audience yes, right. maybe know who is Seth. Perhaps some of them. Seth would be well on the board. Mm -hmm. The pointer would uh, go over the alphabet and spell messages. Okay, and uh, after a while. The messages said they came from a personality called Seth. And I didn't particularly believe in survival of personality mm -hmm. to begin with. Uh, I also figured that if personality survived, they had a lot better things to do than come through on Ouija boards. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I thought it was from a level of my subconscious or something. Uh, the material that we got, however, was excellent. And I was enough of a critical writer myself mm -hmm. to know the material was good. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have continued. It Would didn't make sense yeah. in a philosophical way, and yeah. if um, yeah. and it showed no um, extravagance in terms yeah. of um, going overboard religiously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was sound psychologically, yeah. as far as we could tell. Yeah, and I, you were not cynical at all of these things, but you were. You did have a he healthy. Uh, yeah. Uh, you, you, it, it comes through in the book, is what I'm trying to say. Is it comes through that you really were. Uh, I don't know how to express it, but you were uh, you had a healthy respect uh, for that. It, it, you had a very fine attitude toward yeah, this. Uh, James yeah. was a I, I don't know quite how to express it, but um, you, you were not naive, uh, you know. But you were still open. But you were still guarded. You were just perfect. Right. It seems to me. I still think we were very lucky in mm -hmm. that uh, we had <laughs> yeah. not read mm -hmm. an awful lot of the current occult literature. Right. Because if I had worked bored and uh, mm -hmm. had read a lot and perhaps believed what a lot of people believed, mm -hmm. uh, that this had to be either a good spirit mm -hmm. or a bad spirit or that this was dangerous. Mm -hmm. I really don't know what I would have done. Yeah. The idea of possession never crossed my mind uh -huh. because I never accepted it to start with. Yeah. I mean, it just didn't exist for me. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, Jane didn't even believe in uh, reincarnation. <laughs> you did not believe in no. reincarnation prior to this. And, but your attitude... Afterwards. And afterwards, but now. Yeah. Well, we've modified our <laughs> attitudes a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I did a program a little while ago just to, uh, with some people from, is it the, uh, with the Edgar Casey people. Right. And they said that Edgar Casey, when he was having um, uh, uh, evidences presented to him from his good Christian uh, conscious background, evidence presented to him of reincarnation, he had a tremendous inner turmoil yeah. accepting that which seemed counter to that which he consciously had conceived within yeah. him until he finally mm -hmm. was able to work it out and accept it. But he had a tremendous inner conflict with with that, you know, which would yeah. be more easily acceptable yeah. to certain Eastern consciousnesses, yeah. you know. Yeah, they would uh, take it in stride. But he did seem to work yeah. that out in an amicable kind of way, and I presume you have. Yeah. Well, Jane's well, still in the process of doing Well, that. she's helping a lot yeah. of people work that out, I think, because it's, yeah. a, it's an important question. Yeah, uh, she doesn't... Uh, mm -hmm. She's not against the idea particularly. Yeah, I guess maybe that's the point I was trying to make before, is that she was, uh, well, you know, the idea, she wasn't against the idea of 
these things. You didn't even believe in it, but you still were willing to look at things anew. I mean, yep. you were poet, right. so you must have had a, you're willing to look at things anew. You weren't closed minded. Well, that's, that's, that's a good point. Right. But, uh, yeah, I'd like to say that. But it was a healthy openness. Right. Uh, when the whole thing began, uh, it didn't take us long at all to realize that it was a creative mm -hmm. endeavor. Mm -hmm. And uh, that underlay everything else we did. And that's the main reason we decided to uh, continue. Yeah. I think that, if, as Jane said earlier, it had been uh, too much of anything, uh, too sentimental or too uh, religious right. or, or uh, too even yeah. Uh, pragmatic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We would have turned away from yeah, it. Yeah, right. But as it was, it, it suited us, of course. Right. And uh, so we chose to. Uh, yeah, and that, that, if I may say, that comes through the book. The book is beautiful. Yeah, well, that's the thing that we're mostly interested in uh -huh. uh, telling people about. But I wonder if we could continue a little bit more chronologically. That so there was this 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 entity, Seth, made himself a victim. <clears throat> Maybe you could tell them a little bit about Seth's state or self Seth session. Well, after the uh, board session mm -hmm. stopped, yeah. as they did very quickly, I just began speaking the words automatically mm -hmm. for Seth without knowing what I was saying until I came out of trance. Mm -hmm. uh, there was no training per se for this, uh, no self-hypnosis, nothing, it just happened. Although I did give consent. Mm -hmm. That is, um, had I not wanted to do it, mm -hmm. it wouldn't have happened. Okay, but I right. was so curious, I wanted to know mm -hmm. what was happening. Mm -hmm. um, in the beginning, I paced the floor constantly in trance. I refused to sit down, because I'd read about Casey, yeah. and he lay down on a couch, and I thought, no, not for me, I'm mm -hmm. not going to, you know, and I figured that if I didn't like what was going on, I could run, which yeah. was silly, because <laughs> I was the one that was doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then it took, I don't know, maybe two or three years before I sat down, uh -huh. before I then would close my eyes. Uh -huh. And then there was a period where I closed my eyes and never opened them. And then uh, where all of a sudden uh, I opened them, but I was in a deeper, of course, kind of trance than I had been before that transition. Uh, the one point on reincarnation I wanted to mention, though, too, and so, Seth. A lot covered in the video. Go ahead. Okay, uh, was yeah. that uh, one of my first short stories was on reincarnation. Uh -huh. And I thought as an idea mm -hmm. or a concept, it was great. I loved to play around with it. Mm -hmm. But when this starts happening, when, say, magic becomes real, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you're told, well, you had this kind of a life where you did this, or yeah. this is a fact, yeah, yeah. then I bought mm -hmm. Because uh, it was one thing for me to play around with the concept and think, well, I go for it, or I don't, yeah. or what. Yeah. And another to um, accept it as a definite fact of existence. Yeah. And uh, also, I don't like, and never have, and Seth doesn't either, the idea of karma, uh, as it's been uh, spoken about so much, or the idea of guilt, where people um, believe, for example, that they're suffering in this life because of a karma that they have in a past life. I don't believe in that kind of a connection. Yep. Mm -hmm. And also I believe that all time happens at once. Mm -hmm. So reincarnations have to exist at the same time as this life. And there has to be a constant give and take. All at once. Now. Right. I like the idea of, say, simultaneous mm -hmm. life. Yeah, uh -huh. I'm sorry. You know, not at all. Yeah. That's very interesting. I just hope we're not getting... Too far. And there's a tremendous yeah. amount of information contained in what you just said. It's very yeah. poetic. It's also complicated. And no, but it's it's also very uh, a tremendous economy of language. It's beautiful that you think uh, a lot of information contained in there. You do not have a sense of uh, of the. Uh, you you take some exception to comment as it's generally been uh, interpreted through certain of the yeah. approaches to understanding uh, the consciousness. But there are. Uh, there is a, a time continuum while things are happening all there is an all at onceness to the events. There is a certain continuum or a, uh, a uh, uh, there are past lives or past experiences that people can be aware of and in touch with. Mm -hmm. You have become aware of past uh, experiences of your own. Am I right? Uh, to, uh, to a small degree. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. It's not something that uh, we've especially avoided. Uh, uh -huh. We have a little information on it, and the rest of the time we've just been too busy. Yeah, and we're also sort of saving that for a. Uh -huh. There was a. There was a. There was a. Right. There was a Seth with experiences in Denmark. And, uh, yeah, a few things like that in the very beginning, you see, mm -hmm. which uh, intrigued us no end because we'd never even heard of uh, this sort of thing. That's a tremendous. You see, which was uh, that's what I meant earlier when I said it was creative uh -huh. because uh, to us to even uh, hear of this sort of thing was something new to us. 
Yeah. And uh, we didn't know what to make of it. Mm -hmm. But we wanted to continue. And, and, uh, and then when Jane began to hear the words in her head, yeah. we didn't know what that meant either. Mm -hmm. But we decided to uh, continue because everything else seemed to be uh, working all right in our daily lives. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, then, and then I wonder, I wonder, this kind of experience, was there a very wide community of people that you could communicate with? We told no one for a long time. You did? Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, we told no one. Mm -hmm. And um, was that we watched. Your own doubts? Or was it. We didn't know what we no, were doing. I know that you had some doubts and wondering. Oh, yeah. I found that so yeah. beautiful in the book. So you were really honest well, you, and open how you, you felt. It was surprising. To. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Which was very good. I well, mean, even if we'd wanted yeah. to run out and tell somebody, we yeah. didn't know who to tell. All right. Yeah. <laughs> this stuff wasn't accepted right. in those days to begin with. But uh, until I actually started speaking for Seth, I had never heard of anyone speaking for anyone. Right. I had heard right. of, um, what is it, Ruth Kernan. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But uh, I had never heard of anyone speaking for anyone. So again, when that mm -hmm. happened, for all I knew, I was the only one alive. Yeah. Know. No. But I wasn't about to go and tell the neighbors yeah. particularly either. Yeah. <laughs> at the time. <laughs> well, what about, uh, uh, about uh, now? Do you think there are very many people? That, uh, from my, many, my mail, yeah. um, people. people are very interested in yeah. this. And there are um, certainly spiritualistic groups mm. uh, where they have a so-called spirit guide. Now, I don't call Seth a spirit guide yeah. either. Um, <laughs> I find myself in a peculiar position in that uh, I don't particularly accept, I do want to watch my words, yes. the dogma of any particular group, organization. It, this was my experience. I wasn't about to have it interpreted mm -hmm. uh, for me by others. Mm -hmm. I never thought of Seth as some white cloaked spirit who was just floating around. Mm -hmm. uh, part of my life's work certainly is to try to understand the nature of our personalities, mm -hmm. of, you know, our personalities, mm -hmm. what abilities we've got, mm -hmm. uh, what happens so that we can get this kind of information. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that I really hope is that people would begin to trust their own uh, revelatory experience and not automatically right. cloak it in right. whatever dogma they okay. believe in. Uh huh. Right. That's beautiful. Well, that's beautiful. <laughs> beautiful language. You know, that's really. Uh -huh. That's really. But I wonder if we could back up just a little bit again for some of that old, and come back again to Seth. And mm -hmm. Seth is a uh, is a uh, is a uh, you, you have a Seth session. And excuse me if I'm saying, but you go into another. You go into another. Consciousness right. and a spirit. Is that the right word? How do we? How do we? How do we Seth calls himself what? Essence? Personality. Energy personality. That is an energy personality. Yes. Seth, who had an existence in the past, right. many. comes many. many existences in the past, which he is aware of and has aware of a new consciousness, and comes and speaks through you. Mm. And you are in a trance state. Now you see that would be something. Right. I'm not even sure we've made that clear to people, but right. yeah. that's what happened. And that's Seth. That's who we're talking about. Right. So we're talking another consciousness coming through you. Right. You are a medium right. for that. Right. You've come to know Seth pretty well. Roddy has. Uh huh. Right. You you are not aware of it. No, that is one of the. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Other people relate to him mm -hmm. uh, because they see the phenomena and mm -hmm. they see Seth come through. Yeah. Whatever yeah. terms you want to use. Yeah. Uh, where I am not able to relate in that same way. Mm -hmm. But you have uh, it, your feelings, uh, your interior experiences are unique. Right. And uh, no one else can approach those. See, in the beginning, Jane was always asking me, uh, uh, what did he say? Uh, how did he say it? Yes. Uh, was he nice to these people that were here? Yeah. And so forth and so uh -huh. on. And I would do my best to explain. But this is all from uh, an observer's. Yeah. standpoint. Uh -huh. It doesn't mean as much as uh, her own subjective experience. Right. So uh, through the books, we're really trying to uh, disseminate that information. And through, yes, yeah, that's, uh, yeah. that's, that's really, that's really, um, that's really, oh, no, I'm, I'm wondering if I can come back and pick up on, uh, on, the, on the other thing where you said that, all right, so we have this, this new kind of uh, uh, touch with the content, which is giving information about uh, a consciousness that's not normally in people's cognition. Extremely important information. Now at that time, that contact with Seth became firm about when now would you say? When would that have been? Would it have been 60? I'd say in uh, 
early in 1964. Right, but it would have been just about. It began about late in 63. Just about a decade ago. Yeah, and you were not able, then you had a certain, probably I would assume, a certain sense of uh, personal, and I use the word very advisedly, unease, or at least wonderment, and not not quite know, which has probably been becoming less and less characteristic of your attitude toward this phenomenon sure. than it was originally. So you've become more confident with this this than through the time. I would yeah, I'd, I'd right. say okay. I guess it, we felt as if mm -hmm. again because we knew so little yeah. that we were explorers and yeah, we right, were exactly. going to be, would be very careful right. about exploring something we didn't understand, but yeah. we were going to do it. Right. Right. Um, very good. Beautiful. Yeah. 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 And, and so, and then I guess maybe the thing, I, if you don't, and, and that uh, you were doing this, and then as you began to then extend out, there weren't very many other people that you were able to get in contact with or that were able to give you a sense of positive appreciation or understanding that right. there were similar or, or, or situations that they were familiar with that would yeah. give credence in their own experience to that which you are. Yeah. When, uh, after it began, uh, yeah. I, I went out and got a few books and mm -hmm. uh, I wrote to a few people. Yes. Some of them authors of these books. Yes. And the replies we got uh, didn't satisfy us at all. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And we quickly learned that uh, we had a chance here in mm -hmm. a creative way to yeah. uh, make a contribution right. and uh, at the same time learn on our own yeah. as we went along. Yeah. So all these uh, factors intrigued us no end so right. yeah. because it, they were based on the strengths of our personality, yeah. So yeah. especially Jane's ability with words and uh -huh. so we knew it. It was obvious that uh, her writing ability was a valuable yes. asset here. Uh -huh. and uh, my. Uh, working with images as an artist. Right. That came in handy in all kinds of ways also. Right. And then you, you were you were you were you were respond you have taken responsibility for uh, uh, transcribing or taking right. the message that right. said and handling that with uh, yeah. we with tried the, several different the methods. methods. That's very important right. that yeah. that be Extremely done. Extremely important. Yeah, right. Right. yeah. Uh -huh. uh, I still I still take down the uh, uh, material by hand. I see in our own sessions. In yes. class. Uh -huh. uh, recorders. Uh -huh. are used, and Seth speaks in a different way. But uh, we get a, a more concise and uh, I think a uh, more inclusive approach uh -huh. in our own material, which comes out in the books. Then and you it's do, different than it is in class. Mm -hmm. Then you do in class. Right. Why do you think that is? Well, in class well, he relates to people. I yeah, see, there, there might I be, say, 25 or 30 people, all with their own Approaches, I and questions, and things that it's uh -huh. bound to be different than just two people uh -huh. working uh, by themselves. Yeah, I guess I, I haven't in a regular session. It's a dictation, and that's yeah. it. <laughs> now, if I, if, I wonder if that if that is a negative in feedback that's coming from other people or a lack of. No, we just just think it's differences in. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I wouldn't know. I'm talking about. Yeah, the, no. You know, I yeah. don't experience yeah. that as you do, but and I'm wondering uh, why that is that you have. Greater difficulty having a set come through in a situation where there are other people around. I wonder. I don't know. No, I was that asking, wasn't uh, what Robbie meant. No, that's not what. She comes through differently. Yeah, yeah I just meant it was uh, different. Yeah, I'm I just meant it was different in class than it is when right. we're here alone. When you just by yourself. In, in right. a private so, session. Yeah. Do you think? That, go ahead. Sir. He is um, to the point. Uh, when he comes through, he says good evening or something, and then he says dictation, and he just goes ahead and yeah. dictates a book. Uh, you know, I would say to Robbie, are your fingers tired? Do you want a break or yeah. whatever? Uh -huh. In class, he very rarely goes into that kind of a long monologue, which for us might last over an hour. Uh -huh. Instead, he'll relate to people or he'll come through because of a comment someone asks. Uh -huh. And what Rob meant was it was different. Uh -huh. uh, in his ring. Well, it's the way of being I yeah. see. Right. No, the one is just to accumulate material for the book. Which do you like the best? Well, I'm You're a little bit prejudiced right. in favor of uh, uh, participating myself. But uh, I've learned uh, over the years that uh, other people are really interested. And uh, each person's interest is just as legitimate as uh, the next. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we've learned a lot from that. Uh, we didn't anticipate any such uh, response from yeah. others. It's true. At all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, do you think the in the beginning? Yeah, I'm sorry. Do you think the quality of the responses uh, for the appreciation or understanding? You must have had some responses where you people say, that's, you know, you go all the way from just incredulous ignorance that would be a response to one 
of understanding and then one who could fully, you know, or get close to fully understanding it as you do the significance of it. Is it has the quality of the response or the appreciation of the importance of it been increasing, do you think? Uh, through I think so. Yeah. In the last but uh, we, ne we never had uh, well, uh, experiences that uh, were distasteful. Uh -huh. to oh, good. Yeah, but we were aware of that. Yeah. When we, when we first uh, began to read up, mm -hmm. we discovered that uh, there was such a wide variety of uh, practitioners in the field that it was uh, almost a, a ready-made thing for uh, and that sort of... Uh, yeah, and I'm wondering, have there been um, experiences similar to this historically that people have had that have been I would say negatively painted in the meta in the in the mythologies that we've been forced to live with in the I'd say that's probably happened. So that new consciousness. I couldn't. So say. that uh, new consciousness or contact with it has, in very many instances, why it's extremely valuable. In this case, as I, you don't use the word guide, I would tend to think. No, that, I just. Well, you don't use it, but I would myself would tend to think that what you're doing is a. This is sort of a, a guiding, it's, it's important, and that's, that's why... Oh, well, that, yes. Guiding, right, but, uh, right, we have to work out. But that, 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 well, it's very, very important, and kind of, they, they've very often been seen as people who were, uh, you know, uh, demonic or possessed, there are all these kinds yeah. of prejudices that we're... Right. Yeah, well, we, we began to become aware of that or with even, our reading. Mm -hmm. Or even, I'm wondering if I could say that you, you use the word Previously, where you see became aware of occult literature, mm -hmm. uh, occult has been associated. Now I'm coming. To, let's say just I'm from academic, <laughs> academic scientific community. The scientific community would deal with matters such as uh, this, and they would say this is not, this is mysticism. This is not good objective hard Western reality. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and the scientific community then would not be able to or the intellectual scientifically trained uh, uh, community that's trained in uh, you know to be to be uh, uh, to be to be very skeptical uh, would not been able to until now some of the so, so people so I'm wondering now now they're doing things like um, Karelian photography right. or new, new 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 perceptions that have been by certain people who were gifted are becoming objectively scientifically validatable mm -hmm. so that that mix between so what i'm saying is that maybe that this is a particularly auspicious time for the coming together of a lot of different perceptions but well anyway i'm not sure what i'm saying except i would think no. that you, the, your what your, your the reception for the red, the readiness of the people or generally the concept to receive it would be yeah. Increasing. I mean, I should think that. Well, you see, we think that that's no accident. Okay. And uh, <laughs> that's part of the uh, the whole uh, mystique that yeah. uh, Jane. Uh, well, this is these are taking some large leaps here. Yeah. Uh, and I'll ask people to uh, go along with it, but we think that we even chose to be born at this time, so that uh, in this particular way, this information could start to be uh, given out. Beautiful. This is important information. This is a curriculum for a world that's wondering about a new consciousness within a certain temporal framework. That's it. And there is uh, now. Right. It, there's a, there is a, a major new relationship yeah. to universal mind that uh, the whole of the human family is coming to at this particular time. Yeah. This information is in touch with that. It's extremely important. We, and, we hope uh, so. We hope so. Yeah. No. No. I, well, I mean, I'm. I'm it, 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 it is.